It was a hot sunny day here at Faenza for the penultimate round of the FIM MX2 MX1 Motocross World Championship and Jeffrey Hurlings needed just a handful of points to take the World Championship here on Italian soil. He got off to the perfect start as well. Just behind him was Tommy Searle but Zach Osborne was having a great ride. So too Jordi Tixier, those two would fight over fourth and fifth but it would be the American who would eventually take it after being overtaken by the French kit early on in the race and it would happen in exactly the same position as well Julian Lieber was having a good ride eventually came through into 11th on the Rockstar Energy Suzuki Europe MX2 machine Elliot Banks Brown also rode a steady ride but uh, eventually dropped down to 15th despite being up as high as 9th at one stage but this was Osborne going back around Tixie Ape in the closing stages of the race and at that point it was Jeffrey Hurlings, Tommy Selv and Horbeek and Osborne but the uh, win went to Jeffrey Hurlings in race 1 MX1 race one is a tussle going down the start straight. A couple of riders got caught out. One of them actually, Max Nagel there, just in the background. He wouldn't finish the race. Tony Cairoli though made a decent start behind Sebastian Porcel and then took a surprise move right in front of the home fans. Whether it was planned or not, I don't know. But uh, from there on, Tony Cairoli led the next 17 laps or so. Christoph Porcel, the fastest man on track in qualification was uh, let through by his brother Sebastian and then it became a bit of a showdown or that's what we expected anyway between Cairoli and Paul Sal but it never really happened like that behind them Commander Sal battled on for third to Dyker found his way up to fourth from 18th by the end of the race and Sean Simpson came through in fourth uh, fifth place Tanoli up was sixth Goche Paul was seventh Bobashev was eighth Coppins was ninth Sebastian Paul Sal was ten but Tony Cairoli became world champion after winning race one MX2 race two and all eyes on Jeffrey Hurley as he got a good start from the inside and then came across a few guys to secure that top spot as he went through the first turn just behind him Van Horbeek and Tommy Sell but a couple of laps later Tommy Sell found his way into second position outsmarting the Belgian kid number 89 who eventually didn't uh, fight back he also picked up a slight ankle injury or leg injury after a, a mistake in moto number one so uh, that's how it would stay for the second moto, Hurling, Sel van Horbeek. Tixie 8 once again was in a battle with Zach Osborne. Zach Osborne went missing though on lap 10 and eventually DNF didn't finish the race. So that was Tixie 8 down in fourth. But Jeffrey Hurlings though was in a world of his own quite literally. There were no nerves coming into this race. It was a slow cruise down by pit lane on the final lap. He rounded out the final turn as well. He lit the candles on the Monster Energy finish line jump. He was a winner here in Faenza and with it went the world title in MX2 as well. But that was how the podium finished. Jeffrey Hurlings, Tommy Sell, Jeremy Van Horbeek. And Jeffrey Hurlings clinching the title with a round to go in fine style with a double moto win here at Faenza. Of course it was a red plate before he came here. Dr. Wolfgang Schrub gave him the gold plate to confirm his status as world champion 2012. I have been going through everything this year, you know. I had so many tough times, but I fight my way through everything, you know. The the donor story, the Pocock story. A lot of big crashes going on this year which people never knew about and having to race in a lot of pain but I made it happen. I never could do what my mom she, is, she helped me with doing everything and I'm so happy with KDM we worked so hard to get a title and to get it with a double bin with such beautiful fans it's just amazing. Congratulations hopefully the first of many. Thank you. Final race of the day, MX1 race two, and we did get a bit of a showdown between Tony Cairoli and Christophe Porcel. Cairoli was first to the turn, but then got outbraked by Sebastian Porcel. It wasn't long before he was through, though, before the end of the lap, in fact. Christophe Porcel was there in third with Goche Paul and in fourth, and Commander Sal, whose title hopes had faded after that uh, victory by Cairoli in moto number one, found himself down in fifth. He would eventually get back through to fourth, though. In the closing stages of the race, Christophe Porcel, once he got through in the second place, never let Tony Cairoli out of his sights and that gap was no more than about a second and a half two seconds maximum and he was really applying the pressure to Cairoli despite him there the 222 riding on home soil and the crowd really got into it as well as Cairoli tried to break Christoph Porcel but this is how close it was on the final lap 
Going into the final corner, nothing more than a couple of bike lengths. Tony Kai Rolik just hanging on from Christoph Porcel. But he was already crowned world champion after Moto number one. He was congratulated there by Christoph Porcel, who came home second. Gache Paulin was third in the race, but the overall podium was Tony Kai Rowley, Christoph Porcel, Clement de Salle, who came home fourth in Moto number two. And it was his dad that presented him with the Grand Prix trophy here in Faenza. But what a way for Tony Kai Rowley to clinch the sixth world title. A double Moto winner here this weekend. But just like his MX2 counterpart, Tony Cairoli picks up the gold plate. He is world champion 2012 and world champion for the sixth time. Of course, the end podium, all our champions this weekend and this year. Cairoli, Hurlings, Tim Geiser and Mel Pocock.